as you're working, just like normal, just a reminder. It says I say and so. Make sure you identify keywords, important information from the word problem. Make sure you tell me what you know about those keywords and important information. And then give me a plan to solve. And then uh, you can put your answer in the appropriate area. And don't forget to write an I can statement and an I need statement. Ready? Yes, that's a good call. All right, so, um, and you're around the nearest 100. Perfect. All right. All right, Cicely recognized one thing here that, uh, that, I, that I failed to recognize. On your grittable, all right, you're probably going to work with fractions as you're working with these, but you've got a grittable on the back, you know, to, to grid your answer. Uh, turn, that, turn that to a decimal. You're going to have to round that to the nearest hundredth. All right, round that to the nearest hundredth to be able to grin it, good job, Cecil. All right, you know how we're ready for the objective. It looks like we think we're also going to want to track the fractions. What's, um, what's the important step for pressing out tracking fractions? OK, comment on it again. And what about the important step for decimals? When you're subtracting decimals, sorry. Yeah, absolutely. Line them up. So yeah, that's a good idea. Um, all right, you can go ahead and start working on the independent work. All right, and then once everybody's done, we'll move forward with class. Huh? Yep. Fill the numbers you have. Yep. Got it. All right. Perfect. I think we got the good subtraction of rational numbers. So we we covered the subtraction of rational numbers last week. So the main part of the objective. That's different is the yeah the word problem absolutely so um, so in just a little bit we're going to identify words that would like indicate subtraction and words that would indicate negatives be thinking of some of those so that when we get to that part you can um, participate in the part let me know uh, you can go ahead and start working on the independent work and then once we so I did forget to put the book on the screen. You're, you, you notice everything. Nothing looks fine. No, good job. Yeah. I forgot to put the book on the screen. All right. Um, so just know that when, once you're done with this, you can move on to that. All right. Okay. Yeah. I mean, how are you? Good job. Love it. Good work. Hmm? I need to know what's the difference between. Around. Oh, thank you for reminding me. Okay, so what do you think is the difference? The rational number. Yeah. How they settle it? You don't know? Okay. All right, so integers are going to be positive or negative complete numbers. All right, rational numbers, any number that can be represented as a fraction or a ratio of two integers. So for instance, uh, I'm going to my pencil. You've got one third, right? Well that can only be classified as a rational number, right? That's an integer and that's an integer. So the reason why it's a rational number is it's a ratio of two integers, right? So integers are can you give me an example of integer? Yep, absolutely. What about a positive integer? Yep, exactly. So those are opposites, but those are both integers too. And they're both rational numbers as well. We're gonna talk about that in terms of the slide after that, this next one, the next one. Um we can talk about rational numbers. I'll remember that. So there you go. You go ahead and look on the infinite work. Page 40 of your springboard book. Are you Valerie? Okay, okay, let's see what we're doing here. Okay, let's look at what we got first. 
And so this is the first thing to note here. And you're dividing what you did in bytes out, which is bottom in, top out. What's the, what's the correct way to... Perfect. Go do that real quick and come right back. Okay. Ashley, you doing all right? I like your uniform. It's awesome. Probably look very good for if you want to know how to see, right? There you go. I don't know how to do it. I'm sorry. I don't know how to subtract that. And that is awesome. And uh, how about in word problems? How do you feel about recognizing subtraction in a word problem? And you make it easy. You're pretty confident? So, so? Okay. What I want you to do while, while you're doing your independent work for just a second, um, we're getting ready for class discussions. Just think through maybe some words that would indicate subtraction. Because I'm going to ask that question and you be ready for it. So good job on this. Perfect. Good job. Go ahead. All right. We need to solve the negatives. Okay. So what part of the negatives are you going to know? Okay, so common denominator. So you'd make common denominators just for the sake of time. There we go. All right, and now what would you do? Subtract what? Okay, so what, what would your, because it's an addition, what's the sum? Yeah, 180. So, so in the same thing, if, it, if this were subtraction right here, instead of addition, when we're subtracting a negative, what's our process? To turn that to an addition problem. Yeah, keep change opposite, just like that. So that would be keep change opposite. And now what will we do? Add those, okay, because they're both positive. So then you add them together and you're set. You're set. I think you understand. I think you know. So be confident in yourself. I think, um, so uh, I'll keep that in mind as we go through this. We're going to have some, some class participation. So. You can go ahead. Uh, you can go ahead and start on your independent, and then uh, we'll move on. Class. I'm going to give you about another three or four minutes, and then we're going to we're going to roll on down the road. I need nothing. Okay. So you're you're set. You're confident about subtracting rational numbers, which include fractions, decimals, things like that. Okay. What's the what's the one step when you're subtracting fractions? What's the most important step you can do? Perfect. Okay. Good job. Okay. All right. Good job. All right. Good job, brother. You can go ahead and work on your independent work. So, Larry, you doing good today? Okay. Yeah. Really great process. I mean, I can. I mean, just, 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 just read. You can, you can write it exactly like that, or you can write it in your own words. And then just tell me if there's anything that you need to know in order to be successful today so I can make sure that I hit that in the lesson. Good. Good process there. All right. I need anything. Right. You feel you feel confident, so just put I need nothing. All right. And then you can just tell me that just tells me that you think you're confident in that, and we'll, we'll assess that as we go on. So, all right. Good job, Jonathan. All right, about another minute. Dan, I forgot to say, you are already getting your book. Okay, you're getting your book? Okay, good book. Solve real world problems and subtraction of actual numbers. And then you did that. Good job. Okay, so let's move on. Okay, so now we're going to do the next one. Okay, so we're going to do the next That's exactly what we're doing today. So we're going to recognize. And you feel confident about recognizing subtraction in a word problem? Or recognizing negatives, like some words that might indicate Okay. So just be thinking about those, and I'm going to ask you to do seconds so you can participate in the part. There you go. You're going to get your books for independent work, and we're about to move on. So, all right. Go ahead. All right. We're going to speed this up so that we can move on.
I'm confident in this one. Good job, good job, perfect. Alex. set on that, right? Y'all are doing a really good job from our lesson yesterday, adding these fractions. I haven't seen anybody that has gotten it wrong. Y'all are really just doing a great job. So it shows me that we understand our practices from yesterday, our mechanics of adding rational numbers, and that's really going to help us as we move forward in subtracting rational numbers. I got your right hand, I need to get perfect. Let's see, how you doing? Good. You good? You almost done? Yes. Okay. Come on and bring it. Let me see what you got so that we can move on. There you go. All right, anybody else? I haven't checked it. I don't know if you're slow. All right. Have you got it right here? No, that's perfect. Divide after adding. When, when do you divide after adding? Oh, okay. Adding. All right, perfect. Good job. Okay, let me. Yeah, never mind. That's fine. You can just turn that one in. Yes, this is close here. And this one here. So if you added those two together, what would you get? Okay, so put the 11 there. Oh, no, sorry. You need to get one. You took that one hole out of the 11, so that's representative 8 over 8. So you took the 8 out of the 11, how many is left over? 3. Just All right. And um, just give me an idea that I need. I'm confident that you can write that, so I'm going to move on. You know, I'm going to do that. All right. Thank you, Cicely. Thank you, Lassini. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, everybody else. All right. Uh, does anybody have any good things to start the class? Anybody? Cicely, what you got? The first official game is tomorrow. The first official game is tomorrow. What time is that? 5.30. At 5.30? All right. How many of you are in volleyball? Okay, so I've got at least three of my students. All right, good deal. So 5.30 tomorrow night. I'm going to do my best to come and see your volleyball. Objective, you've already seen the objective, you already wrote your I can statements, and I really like those. Uh, but today, we're gonna be solving real world problems involving subtraction of integers. So yesterday, we solved real world problems involving addition of integers. Today is subtraction of integers. What do you think tomorrow is? Multiplication. Multiplication, and what do you think Friday is gonna be? Division. Division, okay. so. Uh, we're, we're working with rational numbers, which is something we've already been doing for a few weeks, something you did in sixth grade. So I'm pretty confident on your ability to you know, actually subtract uh, rational numbers, and we'll talk about what rational numbers are. So today, the main part of the objective that's different is we're identifying subtraction and rational numbers inside of word problems, all right? Real world problems. And so that's really what we want to focus on today is uh, unpacking word problems to be able to determine that it's subtraction of rational numbers. All right. Um, Valerie, would you read the Texas Essential Knowledge and Skills? The student is expected to apply and Okay, absolutely. So this is where our objective come from. It comes from the state of Texas. They said that you, as a student, you're expected to know how to solve rational numbers, work with them inside of real world problems. And so that's, that's where our objective comes from today. All right, any questions about the objective, about what we're to do? Okay, awesome. All right, well, let's just dive right in then. Uh, we're going to uh, talk just a brief, just... Um, explanation or a reminder about what a rational number is. All right, rational numbers. You see the, you, you saw this last week when we were talking about rational numbers in general. I switched up the slide just a little bit because sometimes this Venn diagram gives students some confusion. 
the confusion often happens when you were, we're classifying numbers as rational numbers, numbers as integers, and numbers as whole numbers. We think that it's either or. All right? Some students get to the point where they think, well, an integer is not a rational number. Uh, but the reality is integers and whole numbers are still rational numbers. So I switched up the Venn diagram just a little bit so you, you could see all the different numbers that could be rational numbers. All right? uh, our dictionary definition, anybody remember a dictionary definition of what a rational number is? Anybody? I know it's probably kind of a fuzzy question. You, you may, hey, Valerie, what do you think? Um, Perfect. That's, that's a dictionary definition of a rational number. So you see right here, that's a number that can be written as a fraction. All right? Can that fraction be simplified? Yeah. Sure it can. All right? Anybody got it? Harley, what, what is that simplified to? Two. Two? And negative two? Absolutely. So eight divided by four is negative two. All right? That's still a rational number. But it could also be classified as an integer. Because integers are positive and negative complete numbers. And so you see how it is a rational number, but another designation of it, it's an integer as well. So don't get that confused that it's either or. Uh, some numbers have multiple classifications. And there's some integers. All right? Integers are positive and negative complete numbers. No decimals, uh, but positive and negative. So Cicely, can you identify? one of the numbers that's inside the integer circle that could also be a whole number? Three. Three, all right? And why is that a whole number? Absolutely. So it's a positive complete number. So those numbers that are positive complete numbers have another classification. So that three really could be described as a whole number, as an integer, and as a rational number. We just refer to it as a whole number because that's the most specific classification. And a lot of times we, we just refer to the most specific classification. But it's still a rational number. And so our objective today is just to be able to subtract any of these numbers. If any of these numbers were given to you uh, in our word problem or whatever, that we know how to subtract them. We know how to find the difference between them. All right. So that's a little bit of review for, for the rational numbers. Let's, uh, let's have a little bit of review because specifically today we're not just worried about subtracting rational numbers, we're worried about uh, and concerned about identifying that inside a problem. All right? So just like yesterday, uh, we found some words that were indicating addition. Let's, uh, let's find some words inside of a word problem that might indicate subtraction. Jalea? Drain. Drain. Okay. So we saw that one the other day inside of a word problem about a pool. A pool was drained. Okay. Alan? Descend. Descend. All right. Descend. All right. You might subtract. Amanda? Difference. Difference. All right. That's a, a hot button one right there. You're going to see that one quite often because difference is the answer to a subtraction problem. Dave? Bought, Bought and gave. How would that be subtraction, Dave? Okay, great. So that's a good identification. Let's see. Took away. Okay. That's another one. All right, we'll just take a couple, a few more. Valerie? Total change. Ooh, I like that. Because sometimes we see, and I like all these, but sometimes we see the word total and we immediately think addition or multiplication or something. But she added a word, change, right? So change indicates a difference. Okay, Amy? Eight. Eight? Okay. Where would you see eight? Like they take apart pieces. Okay, awesome. And that's why I spelled it that way because I thought that's what you meant, not the number eight, but eight. Okay, so eight a part of a pizza, and that pizza is gone. So we're subtracting that. Harley, last one. Withdraw. Withdraw. Okay, I'm really glad you said that as well. That goes along with... Dane's kind of thinking as well, all right? So talking about money, good job. All right, so are these all the words that would indicate subtraction? No, no. no, they're just some of them. So we recognize whenever we see these in a word problem, we're just analyzing a word problem to try to figure out operation, try to figure out what's the important numbers, and if any of these words change the sign. So let's talk about negatives then, all right? 
You think there's going to be some similarities between negatives and subtraction? Why, why would there be a similarity between negatives and subtraction, Alan? Because I think negatives is worse here, and it's a taking away. Okay, so negatives are less than zero, and it's just like taking away. I love that explanation. That's a great explanation. Rowan? When you have like negatives plus positive, you have like subtracting. Okay, so you're basically subtracting. Exactly. So if you've got like six plus negative two, essentially, yeah, you're subtracting the two numbers and keeping inside of the larger number. So I like that explanation too. Okay, awesome. Valerie? Um, so how are you saying because um, negative 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 Okay. All right. Maybe somebody hasn't answered yet. Uh, Valerie, do you have a, you have a word? Maybe no. All right. Anybody else who hasn't answered that might have a different word? Okay. We'll go with Dane. What do you think? Uh, under. under. You got the under there. Jalea. Yeah. Depth. All right. So sometimes we see a word problem about like a submarine or a scuba diver. They're at a depth. All right. That means down below. Valerie. What's that? Sunk. Sunk. Okay, yeah, absolutely. So we could put sunk next to it, all right? So are these all the words that can indicate negatives? No, they're just some of them. Really, we just have to analyze the word problem because they might throw in a word that's normal, like below, depth, under. You're going to see those words quite often. But sometimes a word problem will be an anomaly, all right? Uh, just a different kind of word problem, like we saw about the pool, drain, all right? You don't see that one in a lot of word problems, but you'll see it about a pool, and so you just got to be able to analyze the word problem. So go ahead and get your whiteboards ready, and we're going to go through uh, a few problems together as a class, just like we did yesterday with addition. We're going to work through these. So get your whiteboard. Make sure you've got a dry erase marker and a wiping. Get that whiteboard clean, and then we'll get ready. When you're ready. Go ahead and start reading the problem on your own and start giving me an expression. So what I want from here is I want you to write an expression that you could use to solve this problem. Write an expression that you could use to solve this problem. Now notice... The problem is very similar to a problem we had yesterday. It's actually the same scenario. Does anybody see a difference between this problem and yesterday's, Lucini? Um, What's different about it? The question is, how much time does she have left instead of uh, how much time um, she uh, did they need? Absolutely. Okay, so it, the question, I'll, I, you, you identified that perfectly. The question is different, all right? So I intentionally kept the same problem, but we gave a different question because I want to highlight to you and help you be sensitive to the fact that the most important part of a word problem is the question because the question tells us what we're going to do with the important information and keywords. Think about this. So when you're adding, you can those. When you're subtracting, you can keywords that way. Same thing. Think about, think about this. I'm going to talk about this in a second. Think about the placement of my list children. All right, with addition, you could flip these because of the community property. With subtraction, you can't. It matters where you put the number. Good job. All right. All right. I'm going to walk through this first one and model how I, I'm going to show you my expression. This was my expression. And does anybody see something wrong with my expression immediately? Let's see me. Yeah, so I made a big boo-boo right here, all right? So when I make a boo-boo, I say, woo-hoo, all right? There we go. So it should be a 20. Good job. Good recognition. Okay, so this is my expression, and I just want to walk through the problem and show you how I created my expression that's going to help me um, work through this. So, 
First of all, I just noticed the situation with Darlena. She's got a family dinner. She's made 20 pies. And she, they're having them at lunch and dinner. And it tells me that uh, 20 pies are cut into eight slices. Uh, I'm thinking from the question after Thanksgiving lunch and dinner, how many pies did Darlena have left? That the eight slices is really, it's, it's information, but maybe not relevant to solving uh, the, the problem or to my expression. Are they just giving me extra information? It says during lunch, the family ate eight and a quarter, eight and one fourth pies. During dinner, the family ate nine and three eighths pies. After Thanksgiving lunch and dinner, how many pies does Darlena have left? So I need to figure out how many have been eaten. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna add eight and one fourth to nine and three eighths, all right? And my board, when I get too close to it, it likes to do funny things. All right, so I'm gonna add those together to figure out how many, how many pies are gone, how many have they eaten, all right? And then I'm going to subtract that from 20, which is the original number. Now, what I noticed, uh, and a couple, and I, and I walked around, and probably, not probably, absolutely, uh, something you have to pay attention to with subtraction is you really have to pay attention to where that number is. Now, I saw from here, this word right here, have left that indicated subtraction. So we could probably put that over here on our word wall. Have left. That tells me it was subtraction. All right. So I know it's subtraction. So I've got to pay attention then because I know we haven't talked about this yet this year. We're going to talk about it actually next week. The commutative property. Does anybody remember from sixth grade what the commutative property says? Okay, so absolutely. So you've got six plus four. If you have, if you're adding two numbers, the commutative property tells me I can switch those. Okay, I can commute the numbers. They can move. All right, and she correctly identified that multiplication is the same way. When you're multiplying two numbers, you can flip them around. Okay. And notice she did not mention subtraction or division. You cannot do that to subtraction or division. So it really matters where you put the number. With subtraction, if you commute them, if you put them in the wrong place, you may get the opposite of the correct answer, which means that the correct answer was positive, you might get the negative difference or something like that. So it really matters where you put uh, the number, all right? So you've got to really pay attention to that, all right? All right, if you don't have this expression yet on your board, go ahead and put that one on there, the correct one, and then you can go ahead and solve it. So go ahead and solve. Go ahead and solve. What's that? So. That's a really, I like that. Can I highlight that there? Everybody else can show it. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. okay. right. right. I want to show you two other expressions. All right. And it reminded me to mention one other thing about my expression. Okay. My expression, I put parentheses around it because I wanted to add those two numbers before I subtracted. If I hadn't put parentheses there, I would have gone left to right, subtraction or division, because that's what PEMDAS tells me to do. All right, but I put parentheses around it. OPME, she did it this way. She had 20 minus 9 and 3 eighths minus 8 and 1 4. So she took into consideration the fact that when you're doing PEMDAS, the fourth step of PEMDAS is all additional subtraction from left to right. So she wrote her expression in such a way that if you're going to solve it left to right, you're still going to get the correct answer, right? Because you're going to take away the amount for dinner, you're going to take away the amount for lunch. And that's what you have left over. Sicily recognized that 8, just like in our words right here, indicated subtraction or negative. All right? So she ate these pies, so she taken them away. So she naturally made them negative. Sorry, here we go. She naturally made them negative, and she just added those two negatives together. And she's adding the negatives to the 20, which when you're adding the negatives, as we talked about a second ago, you're really just subtracting. So I like both of those. Good job. Different ways 
to accomplish the same result. All right, y'all ready to show? Yes. You have your answer? Yes. All right, go ahead and show your answers. Okay, I've, I'm seeing these answers. Two and three eighths, two and five eighths, and three and three eighths. All right, we'll walk through solving this because this is really important. Uh, I'm gonna come to this back board over here. They're solving these right here because I wanna make sure that when we're subtracting these rational numbers that we're doing it correctly, all right? So we're gonna we're gonna clear up any misunderstandings really quickly. So we've got 20 minus nine and three eighths plus eight and one fourth. My first step. My first step. I've got to go to the addition. All right, Cicely, what's my first step? How am I gonna be able to add these two rational numbers? Um, you have to find the same denominator. Same denominator with the fractions. All right. Now, what we talked about the other day, when you have the whole numbers, we can add those together and put them away, all right? We'll put those away, and now we just got the fractions to deal with, and we can add that later to that, all right? So we got to find the same common denominator, all right? So what is it? Eight. Eight, right? We know that. And four times two is eight, so one times two is two, all right? And we can just naturally add those together. We have five eighths. So together, these are 17 and 5 eighths. Are you good on that so far? Yes. yes. All right, so now we've got 20 minus 17 and 5 eighths, all right? We talked about yesterday, the other day, we can add those two whole numbers and put them away. The simplistic way to do this, all right, there's, there's a couple of different ways you can do this. You can turn both of these in proper fractions, right? You have big numbers to work with and subtract them. Or the way that I, I showed you the other day, a really simple way, is to take your whole numbers, subtract them, 20 minus 17, that's 3, all right? And know that I'm still subtracting that extra fraction. So I've got 20 minus 17 is 3, and I'm still taking away that extra fraction right there. In order to take that, that fraction or that part of that whole, I have to separate this out. 2, and I'm going to represent that other whole as a, a fraction with the same denominator. Does everybody remember us doing that the other day? Yes. You remember? Yes. Maybe a little fuzzy, okay? So I separated, because there's three holes here, I took one of the holes and I just represented it as a fraction with a common denominator, and I have my two leftover holes. And now I can easily subtract eight minus five, which is three, three eighths. eighths, all right? So my answer is gonna be two and three eighths. Are we good? You think you're good on solving that? Yeah. You get a bit a little bit different. Okay. okay, so you 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 took the whole lot of the twenty there to begin with. Okay, I like that. All right, awesome. All right, let's do one more for the sake of time because I want to make sure that I get you to your uh, your your independent or your group work. So let's go ahead and solve this, and I want you to show me your expression. You know what? We just did a problem like that. I had three problems. I'm going to skip to this one, so I wanted to use the decimals. Use this problem. Go ahead and write an expression that you can use to solve this. Similarity is a lot of coming out. Let's go ahead and get a negative. Subtract a negative. Got 
awesome. All right. All right. Um, let's see. Could you walk us through your expression and how you arrived at it? Okay. Okay, so you said because it says below right there, that makes that a negative. Okay? Great. So I added negative 135.5 subtracting 63.25. And why did you subtract the 63.25? What word told you to do that? It would be the same thing because uh, you're going to have to add to the descent because you're going to do it more down. Okay, so descends, so you're going more down. All right, there you go. Awesome, great. So that's going to be your subtraction. Okay, does everybody have that expression now? That is the correct expression, all right? Now let's just remind me, you remind me, Dr. Malden, this is your important step when you're subtracting decimals. Sicily. Okay, she said to keep change, change. Okay, that's not what I was thinking in my head, but that's not wrong. That's exactly right. Okay, so she said keep, change, change. Remember that? So we could turn our subtraction problem to an addition problem, and now we can add these decimals. So it's the same first step for subtracting decimals as it is adding. Where would I go from here? I'm just going to add them together. What's my important step for adding decimals? What do I need to do, Valeria? Line up your decimals. Line up the decimals, absolutely. So I'm going to take that 63.25, put it down here, and since that was negative, when we change it to an addition problem, we can do that, all right? I've got an empty space right here. What goes in that empty space? Okay, an empty number. Good job. Okay, so then we can just go ahead and add that. Go ahead and do, do, do that and go ahead and solve it, and then you can show me your answers. subtracting a positive, it's like you're going more into the negative, uh, is what, the way that I can describe it. It's like me saying, if I took this expression right here, negative 6 minus 3, that's like saying I owe $6, and now I'm going to owe another $3, so how much do I owe? Nine. I really owe 9, okay? Our brains are geared to just think about 6 minus 3 would be 3. But just understand, when you have a negative and a subtraction, that's, that subtraction's influencing that next number to be negative. All right? Just like that. You good on that? Yeah. All right, I think you are really doing well on that. And so I'm going to go ahead and uh, can I get a volunteer? All right, Alan, will you get one of these to every person? Sicily, we can go ahead and we race. Alan, start over there. You can start over there. All right. I'm going to go around, go ahead and bring around your task cards. You're going to notice something about these word problems, just like my other word problems. Our objective today is solving real world problems involving subtraction of rational numbers. Like yesterday was involving addition of rational numbers. So what I did was gave you the same word problems, but what do you think I changed on them? 
question. The question. The question, absolutely, good job, thank you. The question, because the question is the most important part of a word problem. There we go. All right, let me give you some instructions really quickly on the task cards. I know you'll probably be familiar with the instructions because they were the same instructions from yesterday, or just in case. All right, you will work in groups, but instead of working in groups together as a table, you're going to work with your shoulder partner, all right? And uh, I, may, I may move some to be able to make sure you have a shoulder partner, all right? What's that? <laughs> we'll see what's that. All right, uh, with your shoulder partner, you have a choice, okay? You can either split the task cards up, split them up between the two of you, and each of you work independently. But then once you're done, you check your partner's work. So you're still going to have to do their cards as well. Uh, and you can put your, your analyzation of their work, you can put that on your, your um, answer document. All right? On your answer document, I want to see an expression and a solution. Okay? So you're going to solve it as, uh, as well as giving me the expression. And there's a place for each of those on top of your answer document. All right? And uh, the other choice was you can work together on every single card. So if you want to work together on every single one, you have that option. Or if you want to work independently and then check each other's work, you can do that as well. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the green light on. Uh, that means you can go. You can go ahead and start working. Uh, if you need something, please raise your hand if I'm talking with somebody. Just be patient until I can get to you. Uh, but we can go over there. Any questions? Larry? Can you go to the restroom? Yes, I'm going to turn the green light on and you can go ahead and go to the restroom. Yes, yes absolutely. You good? Yep. Yeah. All right.
that to turn my timer on. So let's get a 20 minute activity. So I'm gonna give about about 17 more minutes. Yeah, we'll work for 17. I would know what to do with the 